from the Man Cave. Thanks for listening, guys. Thanks for watching. What's your daily devotion for what? It is June the 24th. I hope. Oh! 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 It's going to be one of those days. Guys, 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 guys. You ever wake up in the morning and you just knew it was going to be a good day? Did you see me grab that? That was so ninja, it wasn't even funny. Now we're going to transition from ninja to Major League Baseball player. I'm the pitcher. I'm on the mound. I'm in New York City and I'm throwing the heat. Oh! Oh, it was in the box, baby. It was in the box. That's crazy. That's crazy. Well, let me tell you what's going on in my life. Today is 115 degree weather, okay? There's a heat wave that's come over the West Coast, and I'm sweating bullets out here. Honestly, I am sweating bullets. It is really hot. Behind the camera, my son is barbecuing hot dogs. You're like, no way, no way. I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. So, I, I didn't think about that. You're like, Matt, what about me? Well, let me just share this with you. If you were walking through the park and you said, Matt, 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 I, I'm from Oregon, or I'm from Florida, or I'm from Kentucky. I said, well, come on over here, have a hot dog with me, okay? We got hot dogs, we got chips, we got Coca-Cola. You're always invited in the man cave. Oh, it's a rule, okay? It, it, look at, look at, you're always invited. This is the man cave, okay, uh, on remote location, okay? But you're invited to have a hot dog with me. Honestly, I'm not messing around. And you're like, man, if you're not messing around, why aren't we reading the word? Oh, I like that kind of talk. Let's get down to it. Hey, today we're going to be in 2 Kings chapter 2. We're going to start with a great story, one of my favorite stories in the entire Bible. Let me give you a little brief history about what's going on before this story takes place. You got the great prophet Elijah and Elisha, okay? And watch it. Elisha is being mentored by Elijah, okay? But there's, there's a time in all of our lives. Now watch this very carefully. This is a free one where God's going to have us to move out, meaning Elijah is passing the baton to the great prophet Elisha, okay? And he's gonna go out, okay? Now up until this time, Elijah has been mentoring him, has been, has been investing into his life. And, and can I just ask a question? You're like, yeah, yeah, Matt, I, I, I can't stop you. Okay, whose life are you investing in? I'm not talking about money. Who are you investing in? And here's the thing, if you're married, you're investing into your wife, you're building her up, you're loving her, okay? You're cherishing her, okay? Uh, but you're also doing that, Fathers, fathers, head of household, you're investing in your children, okay? That's your legacy, okay? After you're gone, okay? They're going to continue on for a certain amount of time, for a certain amount of seasons. What you taught them is going to stick with them for life, okay? Free one. It's, it's not so much what I say, but how I live, okay? I, okay, because I, I know we've all said this. Do as I say, not as I do. Please, give me a break. Is that, that children will follow you. Oftentimes they're not doing so much what we say, but if they can see it in your lifestyle and you're living it out, they'll follow that. Honestly, they will follow your leading, okay? Elijah has been mentoring Elisha, and now God is calling Elijah up to heaven, okay? He knows it, okay? And here's the thing, Elisha knows it, and he's not real happy about it, but he's rolling with it, okay? Because our source isn't, watch this, our source is never another person, Okay, and oftentimes we're leaning on other people, and that's okay from time to time. But our source should ultimately be Almighty God. Are, are you with me? S some of you are relying on other people, and that's good, okay? But your source in this life to make it through is not another person, okay? Don't, don't, don't use them as a crutch, okay? Don't rely on them where you're handicapped if they're not around. He's your source! Always, 24-7, okay, 365 days a year, God is my source. Where do I go? Well, I don't know what to do, Matt. God is my source. I pray to God. Oh, Matt, I, I'm in this situation. I'm in the season. This is happening to me. God is my source. So what do I do? I go to the throne room of God, and I lay down my petition. I lay down my requests. My requests. What else do I do? I praise him because there's no wrinkle on his brow. He, he's not upset. He's not sweating like I am out here, okay? Here's the thing. In front of God is a sea of glass, so he's not worried about what's going on in your life because he understands it because he allowed it. Oh, so the great prophet Elijah, okay, is taken up to heaven. And there's poor, poor Elisha, you know? But there's something that transpires before Elijah leaves. Elijah says this to Elijah. I'm about to bust out of here, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I know he, he loved the Lord, and he was zealous for the Lord, and he was ready to go. I mean, he, his life, it wasn't ease, comfort, and pleasure. It was hard. Elijah's life serving God was hard. It didn't go perfectly, but it went according to the will of God, what God willed, okay? And oftentimes what God wills and, and what we're doing are two different things. Would you agree? Honestly, okay? And so in, in Elijah's mind, there were things that he wanted to take place, 
But God didn't allow that, okay? But still, Elijah lived out the perfect will of God in all parts of it, okay? And you're like, even when he ran, Elijah ran, okay? Because God allowed it into his life. you got to realize because God was accomplishing something in the great prophet Elijah. And when he ran, he ended up being on that mount where he was talking to God. And he, and he, has the, he sees that Christophany, that theophany, okay? He, he, he sees the power of Almighty God. But it, God hides his strength and that's what Elijah finally learned. That God's all around me. God's in me. God's with me. But he hides his strength. But he never leaves me and he never forsakes me. I love it. Okay, but here's the thing. I'm going to my store. I know, I know I'm all over the place, but I get excited when I talk about these prophets, okay, who had no compromise in their life. What, man? What, man? I get real excited when I talk about men in the Bible who lived a life where there was no compromise because I'm around a generation in a world that does nothing but compromise. Oh, Matt, stop right now because we, can't, we don't have enough time to go there. And you're absolutely right. We don't. We don't have enough time to go there. Don't let it be named of one of you in the man cave. Do you understand? Don't let it be named of you that you compromise, that you cut corners in the, in the areas of your life. No, 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 no. Okay, okay. So... Elijah says to Elisha, watch this very carefully. Before I'm taken, what can I give you? Here, uh, blank check. You're like, oh, blank check? Uh, you know, if, and I know there's someone out there who's saying, well, Matt, if I was Elisha, 8,000 square foot home paid for, right there on the Red Sea, okay? Uh, I know they don't have jet skis yet, but hey, my own boat or boats, uh, servants, gold, silver, money, okay? No. What does Elisha say? Because you remember, Elisha's heart is after the things of God. He says, give me a double portion of the amount of God that's upon you. And you're like, what, 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 what? I don't understand. Elisha says this, give me a double portion of the anointing that is upon your life. What is the anointing? What is that word, the anointing? That's the amount of God that has been placed on an individual's life, okay? And they're never the same once that takes place. Look, they're never the same, okay? And so he's, 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 he's been with Elijah, and he saw all the miracles. I mean, honestly, he has seen, he has heard, he's been there, he's tasted, he's broken bread with Elijah. I mean, Elijah's his bud, okay? And watch this, watch this. He says, hey, I want double of what you've experienced because you and I, hey, we've lived it. I mean, we've been here and there. We've seen a few things and done a few things, okay? I want double of the amount of God that's upon your life placed upon me. You know what Elijah says? Elijah's kind of taken back. He's like, golly. Why, why did Elijah say that? Golly. Because he understands how much of God was upon his life and all the different things that transpired within his life. And he says, it's a hard thing that you're asking for. It really is. I mean, it's not, I, it would have been easier for you to got the 8,000 square foot house and the boats and all the wives and the servants. But Elijah says this. He doesn't say no. He says, I'll tell you what. He leaves it up to God. He says this. Elijah the great prophet says this. If you see me when I'm taken to heaven, God's answered your request. Not, not me. God has answered your request. And so what ends up happening is all of a sudden there's this whirlwind. And it separates Elijah and Elisha. Okay, and I'm going somewhere. Stick with me, okay? I'm going. You got somewhere to go? Cancel your plans. Stay with me. <laughs> okay, so a whirlwind, basically a tornado, separates the two, okay? God sends a chariot down, okay? Watch this very carefully. Some, some, we're not going there. Some argue, was he taken up in the whirlwind? Was he taken by the chariot? Doesn't matter. What matters is this, that Elisha sees Elijah taken up to heaven, okay? And guess what falls down from the sky when Elisha was taken? Oh, I get, I, look, look, honestly, I, I, I'm here in 115 degree weather and I'm getting goosebumps, okay? The cloak that was upon Elisha the whole time he was here in his earthly ministry, that cloak, okay, that anointing, that cloak represented, it was like a prayer shawl. It represented God, the tassels, it represented the name of God, it represented God is upon me, okay? So guess what he just got? He just got the best gift you could ever give. I mean, honestly, okay? He just, yeah, he gotta realize what he just received is better than 8,000 square foot house, gold, silver bars, boats, women, servants, okay? It's better than any inheritance, it's better than anything. It's God. And I've often said this, and I gotta stop here for two seconds. Will you give me two seconds? 
when you finally realize, okay, that your inheritance, okay, is God. I mean, He is the greatest gift in this life. When you finally realize what your reward is, okay, and what you should be longing more than ever, okay, and what you already obtain and have, okay, and you can cultivate that. Once you understand that God is my reward, He is my source, He is my love, He is my Savior, He's my everything, and now Elisha the great prophet has the cloak, the mantle to prove it, okay, meaning He's going to accomplish in His life double, double the miracles that Elijah did, and He was there for a lot of those miracles. So Elisha He's a little bummed, okay? He really is. He's a little bummed. My, my buddy, my partner, fist bump, he's gone, okay? But he has God. God is a source. It's never a man. Uh, Elijah was there for a season to train up, to raise, to teach, to exhort, okay? So he picks up that cloak, and he walks over to the Jordan. Now, the Jordan, okay, is running with water. I mean, there's water everywhere with the Jordan. What does Elisha do? He grabs that cloak. Pow! Yeah. You ever wash dishes? You're like, Matt, don't go there. Don't go there. No, I'm just saying, have you ever done dishes, okay? And you and your sister, you and your brother is in dishes. What do you do with the towel that you dry the dishes with? Boom! And you smack them on the towel. Have you ever done that? Honestly, have you ever done that? You know, don't, don't look at me like that, like you're some squeaky clean guy that you've never popped someone with the towel. Everyone, and sometimes we even dip them in the water. We go, bam! Elisha grabs that cloak. Bam! The water separate, okay? Wow brings us to our story today. Like, that was the longest intro ever. That wasn't very long. That wasn't very long. Okay, verse 23. So now, who are we talking about? Elijah. What does he have? He has God. What else does he have? The double portion? The double anointing? Verse 23. He went up from that place to Bethel, and while he was going on the way, some teenagers, some boys, some youth came out of the city and started jeering at him saying, watch what they said, go up bald head, go up bald head, verse 24, and he turned around and when he saw them, he cursed them in the name of the Lord immediately. How soon? You hear that? Immediately, okay, two female big bears came out of the woods and tore, shredded, mauled 42 of the boys. And from there he went up to Mount Carmel. And from there he returned to Samaria. Oh, you're like, Matt, oh, oh, uh, just tell me what happened, okay? Watch this, okay? First of all, okay, Elisha, okay, it's, it's maybe been a week or two weeks, okay? And here's the thing. Word had gotten around, okay? You know people like to gossip, tell stories, okay? And, okay, and, hey, did you hear, buddy, but hey, Joe, 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 did you hear that Elijah, okay? He, he was sucked up into heaven in a twister, okay? And, and, so, and Joe, Joe says, no, 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 that's not how it is. I heard that a chariot of fire came down, and he jumped in it, okay? And, and he had a Coke in one hand, okay, and his King James in the other, and he swirled on up into heaven like a Santa Claus kind of deal. And, and he, look, 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 look. So everyone's heard, okay, and they're all spinning their tails, spinning their stories about Elijah, okay? Now watch this. If you don't belong to God, you don't believe it. You think that's bull crap. He got sucked up by a twister. He got thrown against a rock, okay, and he's dead. The animals ate him. That's what you think, okay, because here's the thing. When you became a Christian, when you were born again, when God has spoken your name, okay, and written your names in the Lamb's Book of Life, there's a change in your life, and one of the things that you receive is discernment. Not physical discernment, meaning of this world, okay, like earthly wisdom, but you've received something that is an almighty gift from almighty God, which you have means you're able to see things in the spiritual realm. You're able to have spiritual discernment to understand. And so, a person hearing it that didn't belong to God would dismiss it. They would just dismiss it. He got in a storm and got killed. That's the stupid, and, and they're trying to spin it off to me that God took him up to heaven. I don't believe it. Watch this very carefully. I do, because it's in scripture. And that God's word is inspired, and it is God breathed, and there's no changing God. Camp out here for 20 seconds. Will you give me 20 seconds? You're like, Matt, 20 seconds, I'm timing you. Okay, time me, time me, time me. I run into people all the time that they say this. Well, only parts of the Bible are true. Well, look at, can I just share this with you? If only parts of the Bible are true, that means God's incompetent. Because God oversaw, okay, the creation of the Bible. He's the one who through his spirit spoke to men and they uttered those words. They wrote them down, okay? It's all true. But again, there's people and there's religions, okay, false cults that say, well, parts of it are true. See, even Islam takes part of our Old Testament and applies it to their scriptures, okay? Watch this, watch this, watch this. It's all true. It's God breathed, okay? It's inerrant, meaning it's perfect from cover to cover. Here's the thing, God's not trying to hide his will from men because here's the thing, he's putting it up front. And even though he's put everything he requires up front, 
people still don't obey. They still won't listen, okay? And you're like, Matt, where are you going? Well, we're going back to our story of Elijah, okay? So he's walking up, okay? And watch this, okay? That town, okay, Bethel, was, which was supposed to at one time, which was, it was a spiritual hub for Jehovah. I mean, at one time, Bethel was like the place where you went to worship our God, okay? But now, it's a den of iniquity. They got every cult, I was about to say freaking cult. They got all these false cults, and it, here's the thing. You know I'm going there. It's not how you start, it's how you finish. We talked about that yesterday and the day before. Many people start right, and they're so zealous for God, and they're going in the right direction only to have something in this life that they don't understand, and they charge God with contempt, and they get mad at God, and they feel justified. They feel justified, which you're never justified when you're disobeying God, okay, uh, to, do their, to leave God, to do their own thing. Well, that, it's written in Scripture that people are going to do that, okay? It is those who continue to the end that are saved. It's not the person who said a few words in church, who got baptized, who was an elder, who was a deacon, who, who had a prominent position in the church, and, and then gets mad at God because God allowed something into his life. God says it rains on the just and the unjust, meaning things happen. But when they happen, and you take your last breath here, where will you be taking your first breath in the eternal life? Are you going to take your first breath in hell? And after your first breath, you're going to gasp because of what you see and you just didn't believe it was true? Or are you going to take your first breath in heaven? How you're living today, okay, and the result of the condition of your heart will dictate where you're going to go for eternity, okay? Because your heart doesn't lie and your actions don't lie, okay? Okay, so as Elisha is walking up to Bethel, which again, at one time was a mega, okay, town, for God, which is now corrupted, okay? There's mixing, there's idolatry galore there, okay? There's very little remembrance of him, okay? Everyone's doing their own thing, okay? Don't need to go there in this devotion, okay? And they start saying, Baldy, right there it upsets me. You're like, why? I don't know. See, uh, uh, Elijah had lots of hair. Elijah, from Scripture, was a very furry man. I mean, he's a mountain man. He had fur on his arms, and you know what I'm saying? He's kind of like Esau, okay? But well, Elisha has no hair on his body. Basically, he's bald. And they're saying this, hey, baldy, hey, baldy, hey, hey, why'd you go up? They keep on saying that to him. And the word jeering, see, depending on what translation you're reading, depends how you're understanding the story. They're really harassing Elisha. It's not one against one or two against one, four against one. It's 42, okay, people against God's man. Now watch this. Depending on your translation, some put, the, the Bible puts it this way, that some were, they were little children. No. Okay, the same word, okay, in the original language, okay, in the Hebrew, discusses Solomon when he was 20 and Joseph when he was 39. Okay, so it's, it's talking about a younger adult, okay? So there's 42 of these punk thugs, lowlifes, white trash, okay, if I can say that, can, sure, okay, look at, look at, look at and they're harassing Elisha, okay? When they're saying, go up, Baldy, they're not talking about go up to the city because Bethel was an elevated city. No, 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 no. What they're talking about is, hey, we've heard the story about Elijah. Why don't you go up too, Baldy? If it's really true, meaning they're mocking God, they're mocking God's servant. They're mocking God's prophet. They're like, hey, Baldy, why don't you get sucked up in the twister? Oh, oh God, I'm coming home, I'm coming home. See, th that's what they're insinuating. Got God's attention, didn't it? You're like, how do we know? Because, uh, wh wh what do you mean, how do we know? Did I not read the text to you? How do we know? So what is, watch this, watch this, watch this. Elisha's like you and me. I know you're all bad to the bone. Honestly, I, I know you're bad. I mean, I know you can throw down, honestly. But whether 42 men against one, okay? It could be a little intimidating, okay? But if God's fighting for me, who can be against me? Ah! Oh! Okay, the free one, free one, free one, okay? But I, I don't know, I don't know. But I think Elisha may have been a little, you know what I'm saying? Not fearful, but dumbstruck, okay? But I think this is God's first appointment with Elisha by himself to show the power of Almighty God. See, he's been around Elisha. Okay, and yeah, he snapped the cloak and there was the miracle. But I think this isn't really uh, so much, okay, a, a judgment against the youth as it is building up the man of God. So you got to realize that God is interested in you. 
God's interested in you. Uh, yeah, there's, there's evil people around us. There's wicked people all around us. And yeah, God has their number. They're not getting away with anything. When God sees people, he sees them in light of eternity. God's already spoken a word of judgment against that individual who is wicked in darkness. And their choices are, are, are showing that, okay? And, and so it's just a matter of time before their day is up. And they go, oh! And they open their eyes in hellfire. You with me? Say you're with me. Are you with me? Okay. God doing. God is building up Elisha. God wants Elisha to know that I got your back. Okay? And, and honestly, I don't know, okay, from the, the language, it was very aggressive. The jeering, there's so much more to the word of jeering or hassling, okay? It's, it's almost like you're in fear of your life, like they're going to stone you, try to get you or something, so okay? what's Elisha do? Elisha, okay, places a curse on them in the name of God. And you're like, oh, I don't understand. He doesn't try to get even. He puts the situation in God's hand because he realizes that God allowed the situation. God allows us to go into season, into situations, to have events that we don't like. But how many of us will take the situation, the event, or the season and give it back to God in the throne room and allow him to handle it? We don't. Oftentimes we don't. Yet we say we're his children, yet we say we're Christians, and yet we say we're in the way and we're on the neural path, but we're doing things our way, which is always what? Idolatry, okay? No, 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 no. Elisha places the curse, and the curse allows God to place the judgment, okay? The curse, and you're like, and a lot of people that complain, it was wrong for him to do that. What? Well, he did it. God didn't do it. Really? Okay, watch this very carefully. If Elijah spoke words, okay, that weren't from God, God wouldn't answer them. God is under no obligation to do what Elisha or Elijah or Jeremiah or Ezekiel or Isaiah or Paul say, okay? What's taking place is this, okay? The Spirit was so heavy upon Elisha that the words that flew out of him, okay, really weren't his words. He was being led by the Spirit of the living God. As God was leading Elisha through his Spirit to utter those words which were God's will, okay, God answers the prayer that he petitioned Elisha's heart with, okay, and then God sends the two female bears. Now, can I sh share this with you? In a million years, if I was going to fist fight a bear or get it on with a bear, can I just share this with you? I would much rather fight a male bear than a female bear, okay? Because look at a female bear, it's, it's party time with them, okay? They're not looking at you. A, a male bear, he'll swipe at you. He'll growl at you. He'll, he'll pull that testosterone male bear thing. Not a woman. She's going after you, buddy. Okay, she will rip your freaking head off, especially if you're between her and her cubs. It's in her. It's her nature. It's her instinct. God placed something in those bears, and those bears are now looking at the 42 like, I'm going to get it on with them. And what did the bears do? They shredded them. Now, did they kill them? No, God taught them a lesson, okay? Don't mess with God, don't mess with God's prophet. Do you understand? If Elisha would have said those words and nothing happened, wasn't of God. And friends, can I just share this with you? A lot of you say things and you put it in God's camp and it isn't of God. You're hearing the enemy. You're hearing Satan, okay? And, and you're somewhat prophesying. This is going to take place. This is going to happen. Friends, here's the thing. Do you want to know the qualifications of a prophet? If they misspoke one time, they were a false prophet. That's why in a million years would Matt never say, hey, I'm a prophet of God. Uh, no, See, no. You said something as a prophet of God, and it did not take place sooner or later. You're a false prophet. Zero. You couldn't make any mistakes. That, that's why you had to hear. You absolutely had to hear the voice of God. You knew. And so Elisha knew that which was welling up inside him, okay, that spilled out in the form of a curse, okay, putting it in God's camp, and God brought it immediately. Here's the thing. I'm, I'm going to harass this guy over here. Hey, let's harass him. Hey, there, there's Elisha. You know what I'm saying? Let's, let's bust him. Hey, let's beat the crap out of that guy. You know what I'm saying? Let's show him who's God. Okay, look, look, look. Uh, uh. And all of a sudden, Elisha says, you're cursed in the name of God, in the name of I, the great I am, okay? Immediately, right out of the woods, boom, two bears, okay? Guess what? Yummy, 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 in my tummy, tummy, tummy. They mauled those guys. Hey, listen, have you ever fallen off a skateboard? I have. Have you ever fallen off a bike? I have. Have you ever climbed a fence and you, you didn't go up it right and you busted tail? What I'm trying to say is if you ever come home to mommy and you cut yourself. I was in a motorcycle accident, okay, in a tree limb 
went through my leg right here, and both my arms were broke, okay? I was bleeding all over the place. I've, I've shared this in a devotion. Watch this. I've come home bleeding before is what I'm trying to say. Friends, these 42 young adults came home shredded, okay? Honestly, shredded. Bitten, chewed, scraped, cut, okay? Did they learn their lesson? No. What do you mean they didn't learn their lesson? The lost will never learn their lesson until God does a change in their heart, until God shines light in their heart. That's why Matt in the man cave doesn't witness to everyone, okay? Yeah, if you're listening, hopefully, okay, you're desiring the pure milk and the pure word of God, the meat of the word, okay? If you're in the man cave, okay? But there's some people, they're here today, they're gone tomorrow, because why? Because the word stepped on their toes and they don't want to change, okay? God's not worth them changing for. I mean, they're the God of their life, okay? I mean, honestly, they're the God of their own life, they want to do their own thing, that's fine. Visit when you can, okay? But when the horn blows and Gabriel's sounding it and Jesus is calling up his children, if you're not going you know why watch this guys watch this very carefully my wife gave me this and it's a golden nugget okay well God gave it to my wife and my wife gave it to me Elisha didn't dictate to God how to curse them he just cursed them in the name of the great I am he placed a curse on them now if it's of God it will come to pass if it's not of God it's not going to come to pass can I share a nugget with you there are people all the time trying to throw curses out. These, these, these witches and, and these people in these groups and these cults, and, and, and they think they have such great power. Only if God allows it will the curse fall. You gotta realize, only if God allows it. Because if it's not of God and it hasn't filtered through the sovereignty of God, the providence of God, His perfect will, God denies access, okay? You guys, in the story of Balaam and Balak, and I did two devotions on this, and you gotta watch them because there's so much meat in those devotions, there's so much theology and insight to God, okay? Finally, the prophet of God, he wants to curse Israel because the Moabite king, I can't say it, Moabite king, wants to pay him, okay? He really wants to curse Israel, okay? Because the Moabite king cannot destroy Israel unless there's a curse on him. Watch this, okay? But finally, Balaam says this, that was the prophet. When I'm talking about Balaam being the prophet of God, I'm using that term very loosely, okay? God was using him to teach you and I something today, okay? But he wasn't a prophet of God, okay? But he says this, okay? I can't curse that which God has blessed. What? What? The whole theme of that story of Balaam and Balak, okay? I can't curse that which God has blessed. Friends, let me tell you this. God uses people. And you're like, yeah, 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 yeah. No, 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 you don't understand. God uses people. God chooses. He plucks an amber out of the fire. And there's nothing special about that individual. Okay? And what he does is he places a word upon them. His word. His anointing. Okay? His passion. What are you saying? Oftentimes... God is using a person and people don't like how God is using that person and they try to curse that individual. They try to hurt that individual. They try to cause harm to that individual. They do all these rotten and nasty things to the individual that God has spoken a word into their heart from eternity past into their life so it's living out today. Watch this very carefully. As they're trying to meddle with this person of God, just like Elijah, just like Elijah, it's on them. Meaning the curse that which they place on that man actually falls upon them. The sword goes through their own heart. The Bible heart. says, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. It says this, it goes on to say, a thousand. How many? A thousand will fall at your left hand. Ten thousand at your right hand. They won't get anywhere near you. Why? Because God has a purpose and a plan for that individual's life. And I'm talking to some of them right now. What? 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 I'm talking to some people. You know God has a plan for your life. You know you're special, okay? Does that mean someone else isn't special? No, it just means God is going to use you in a mighty way for his kingdom. I like to call these people frontline warriors, okay? Because they don't understand all that's taking place in their life. But what I understand is God is making them into something. He's maturing them. He's strengthening them. God has purposely placed them in the fire of affliction. And what's happening? What's coming out of that fire is beyond wisdom to servant and understand you, but God sees it. I have a vessel that I can use that will rely solely on me. The Bible says, touch not my anointed. Do my prophets no harm. You know what, what's missing there? The intent of God's heart. 
It could say this, or else you'll be dealing with me directly. And I don't take it lightly because I chose that guy. I chose Elisha. Elisha was doing his own thing. Elisha was what? He was farming. He, he was rich. He was busy about what? Serving his family. Then Elisha comes, okay? He places the cloak upon his shoulders. Are, are you with me? He places that cloak and he says, come follow me, meaning this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to disciple you. I'm going to be your mentor. Oh my goodness, okay? Friends, from time to time, I see it. I see people messing with people that they shouldn't be messing with, and it always backfires on them. How, how so? It, because of God. It, it's not that person saying they're special. That person is just a servant of Almighty God. But God has placed a call upon that person's life. And when you go mucking with it or meddling with it, you lose. Well, you are the loser. Who's the loser in our story today? Who's the loser? The 42 youths, okay? How do you spin that off? Uh, you're making fun of a prophet. He places a curse on you and you got eaten by bears 10 seconds later. Yeah, oh yeah, I fought that bear. As there's rips and, and chunks out of your whole body and you just squeak by with your life because of God's mercy and grace and long suffering and forbearance and patience, okay? God showed those 42 grace and mercy because he could have just as well killed every last one of them and they would have opened their eyes in hell fire for messing with the man of God. So, 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 so is that the end of the story? That's nothing. I'm going to conclude, though, within three minutes. So you don't leave me, okay? Did God teach Elisha? You can trust me. See, this was about Elisha. This wasn't about the 42 youths who were what? Rotten to the core, who were wicked, who were in darkness, who were rebellious in spirit and at heart, whose destiny is hell, death, and the grave. It wasn't about them. It was about God teaching maturing and proving himself true to this new prophet that he's going to use mightily. See, see he, Elisha doesn't need Elijah, okay? Watch this. God says, I'm going to be with you, Elisha, in the same manner and even more so, just as I was with Elijah, okay? What we have here is God taking time to invest in our lives in the situation, in the season, in the event, okay, it probably was pretty nerve-wracking, okay, to Elisha. It might have been downright scary, and I know what the Bible says, that God hasn't given me a spirit of fear, but of love, of no strength, and of sound mind, okay? And so with his sound mind, he knew, I need to go to God, okay? With his strength, he's crying out, okay? And the love he has isn't for these people, yet he loved all of Israel, but he wanted them to change and turn from their wicked ways so they didn't, what, perish? But his first love was God. So guys, you gotta, do you understand the story? Why the story's even there in the Bible? Is it to, sh no, 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 it's not about bears. Watch this, okay? God is doing the same thing in your life. Oh, what are you talking about? There are things that you're in right now, or you've been in in the past, or you're going to go in in the future, and they look dark. They're like, golly, I'm in the valley, I'm in a storm. What's going on? It's not to destroy you. It's to build you up. It's to make you into who you are so you understand God's power and authority. Guys, I need to share this with you one more time, and I'm closing. God hides his power. Guys, let me say it again. God hides his power. Why? I don't know. But his mighty right hand, it's so powerful it's not even funny. And when he speaks something, it happens immediately, okay? But oftentimes we don't see the angels that are standing around us with their swords drawn. But God has showed me before. We don't see uh, what all's taking place, but God does. When we're, when we're in distress, when we're in this thing that's happening to us, we don't see all the angels that are around us, God's angelic protection. We don't see the hedge that's around about us. We don't know the words that God has spoken over us. I mean, honestly, you're safer than a bug in a rug. You're in the cleft of the rock. You're in the shadow of God's wings. You're, as you're in the cleft of the rock, who's standing before the rock? It's God with the sword drawn. And that is the person, okay, who can make alive, okay, who can kill, who can uproot, who can plant, okay? God is the one who can say a word and create something out of nothing, okay? And some of your lives, that's what you feel they are. Some of you are struggling so hardcore right now, it's not even funny, and you're questioning, and you're asking God the question, why? Why, Lord? I don't understand. You just got the answer in this video. You just got the answer in this devotion. He's building you up so he can use you in a mighty way because you're a frontline warrior for Christ. Understand? 
You're God's chosen. You're God's anointed. You're special to God. Guys, 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 can I just share this with you? And you're like, yeah, 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 yeah. Your best days lie ahead with God. They honestly do. He's not gonna leave you. He's not gonna forsake you. Nothing can separate you from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus, okay? Look at, look at your best days lie ahead. No matter what you're experiencing right now, no matter what you've gone through, okay? Realize this, God is gonna do something in the days coming. And I think for some of you, it's gonna be very, 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 very soon, okay? Give him the glory, give him the honor. Realize this, he has your back. Hey, this is Matt from the Man Cave.